Hi everyone! Today I will be showing you how to build a custom 404 layout using Avada Layouts. In this video I will explain the basic principles of Avada Layouts, and then show you how to build a custom 404 layout for your website from the ground up. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one, and if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok let's begin. Avada Layouts can be found at Avada Layouts, or from the Layouts tab on the Avada dashboard. To quickly understand and get started with this tool, it's useful to understand layouts and layout sections and how they work together. Check out the linked Avada Layout docs to read more on this, but it's easiest to think of a layout as simply a container that holds the page content, with the content itself coming from the layout sections. Avada Layouts opens on the Layout Builder page. Here you can see the global layout and any custom layouts that have been created. A page layout is comprised of content coming from four layout sections. A header section, a page title bar section, a content section and a footer section. This is how Avada is constructed, and normally the content of the various sections is generated through a combination of the global options and the pages you build. What Avada Layouts allows you to do though is to create and set your own custom layout templates throughout your website. This can be done globally, by adding custom layout sections to the global layout, or you can create your own conditional layouts. So let's delete this existing 404 page layout and create it again from the ground up to see how it was built. But before we do that, let's just trigger an error page to see the default 404 layout. Here it is. Not particularly exciting, is it? With Avada Layouts we can do a lot better. So back in Avada Layouts, the first thing to do is to create the new layout. I'll just give the new layout a name here, and then click on Create New Layout. The 404 layout is added to the layouts below, but at this point it's empty of custom content and no conditions have been set. As it's a conditional layout, the layout will first become active when we set the conditions. So let's build the layout sections first. Let's start with the Page Title Bar layout section. I'll click on the Select Page Title Bar section, I'll just give it a name, and hit enter. Ok, so now let's mouse over it and edit it to start the building process. I'll just go into Avada Live as my preferred builder. Ok, so now let's start with a new container with a 1-1 column. I'll just edit that, and head to the Design tab, and add 6% padding top and bottom. Next I'll go to the Background tab, and the Image tab, and I'll add a background image here from the Media Library. Ok, so now let's add some content. I'll add a title element in this column. I'll make it a rotating title, and set the rotation effect to light speed. I'll leave the default display time and loop options, and now I'll add my rotation text. I'll call this, oops. Ok, so now I'll go to the design tab, and here I will center the title, leave it at H1, but I'll override the font size to 120 pixels. Yeah, that has some impact. Now I'll add another column under this, and in this I'll add a text block element. I'll add my text, and I'll center it, and on the design tab I'll make it 20 pixels. Next I'll add a button element under this. In the button URL field I'll use the dynamic content option to link this button to the site URL, so it goes back to the home page. And under this I'll add some text for the button that says go back to home page, and I'll center it, Ok, awesome. I might just go back to this column and add some bottom padding to make this a bit bigger. Ok, that's done. Let's just save that, and come back to our layouts page. Now I need to build the content layout section. I'll just create a new layout section here, and I'll head to Avada Live again. Before I start building, I just need to set some layout section options. I'll just head to the Layout section options and the Content tab, and in the Content Padding options, I'll set 0 pixels top and bottom padding. Now I'll add a container with a 1-1 column, and I'll start by editing the container. I'll just go to the Design tab and give it 6% top and bottom padding. And in this container we just need a simple title element. I'll call it Why Not Read Our Latest News, and I'll head to the Design tab and center it, make it a H3, 
and override the font size to 20 pixels. Okay, so now I want some blog content. I'm going to get a bit fancy here with some box shadow on the columns, so I'm going to make two columns here for the blogs. Let's start with the first one by adding a one half column. I'll just edit the column, and on the design tab I'll give it 2% right column spacing, and down on the column border size options, I'll add one pixel all around. I'll make the border color this gray, and I'll set an eight pixel border radius all around as well. And now I'll turn on box shadow. As you can see in the description here, positive values put the shadow below and right of the box, and negative values put it above and to the left of the box. So I'll just give it 10 pixel vertical and zero pixel horizontal to position it. Next, I'll set the box shadow blur radius to 23, and set the box shadow color to be this almost transparent black. So what this does is create a bit of an optical illusion with color. If I just turn on preview for a second, we can see that it now looks like inside the column is white, and outside is light gray. When in fact it's also white outside the column, it's just the spread and transition of the box shadow creating that illusion. Okay, so back to work. Just to finish on this column, I'll head to the Extras tab and set an animation. This will be Fade, from the left, at a speed of one second. Now I'll add the content. I'll add a blog element in here. And I'll change the layout to Grid, set the number of columns to 1, and the number of posts per page to also be 1. I'll scroll down a bit, and under Content Alignment I'll set that to Center, and I'll also increase the excerpt length to 40. I'll also come down a bit further and turn off Show Comment Count, Show Read More Link, and Show Tags. And I'll set the pagination to No Pagination. Finally, at the bottom here, I'll make the grid element color transparent, and set the separator style to No Style. And I'll add a bit of padding to the Blog Grid Text Padding option. I'll set 40 pixels right and left, and 20 pixels at the bottom. OK, that's that column. So now I'll duplicate it, edit the blog element, and change the post offset to 1, so it shows the next post. Everything else is good, but I just need to edit this column, and change the 2% column spacing to the left on this one. OK, so now I need a new column. I'll add a new full width column under here, and I'll just edit that column. And on the Design tab, I'll add 60 pixels top padding. Now I'll add a title element. Paste in my title, and on the Design tab, make it a H3, and override the font size to 20 pixels. So now I need some testimonials. I'll start with a one-third column. I want to add some padding to this column, so I'll edit it, head to the Design tab, and set 50 pixels top, 30 pixels right, 20 pixels bottom, and 30 pixels left padding. I'll also give it a 6 pixel border radius all around. And on the Background tab and the Image tab, I'm going to add this image here to the background of the column. I'll also head to the Extras tab, and down the bottom here I'll set some animation. I'll make it Fade, from the left, at a speed of 1 second. OK, so now I'll add the content. I'll start with an image element, and add this guy here. I'll just set an image max width of 90 pixels. I'll align it to the center, and I'll add a 20 pixel bottom margin. Next is a text block element, which will contain some lorem ipsum. I'll just align it to the center, and make the font white. Under here I want a final text block, so I will duplicate this one. I'll change the text to Mike Smith, Brooklyn NY, and now I'll do a bit of inline editing. I'll select the lot, and first I'll go to Typography and change the font size to 16 pixels. I'll make it bold, and then I'll just select the location and change the color to this site yellow. Finally, I'll head to the Design tab and add 40 pixels bottom margin. OK, so there's my testimonial. I'll just duplicate this column a couple of times, and I'll just edit the center one. I'll change the image to this girl, and I'll change the name to Kylie Jensen. And I'll edit the column, 
and on the Extras tab, I'll change the animation direction here to bottom. Alright, almost there. I just need a final container under this, but this is a global container that's already in my library. So I'll add a container, head to the Library Containers tab, and add the container called Book or Call. OK, so that's the Content Layout section done. I'll just save that. To finish up, we now just need to head back to the layout and assign some conditions to get this layout to show on 404 pages. If we mouse over the bottom of the layout box, we can see that this is where we add conditions to the layout. These conditions determine when the layout will be used. I'll just click on that, and here we can see the Layout Conditions dialog. In this case, we want this layout only to be used on 404 error pages. Under the Others tab, I will include the 404 page condition by selecting the tick box. This turns green, and we can see in the right column that we have now included the 404 page condition to the layout. The dialog auto saves, so we can now just close it to return to the layout. So now at the bottom of our 404 layout, we can see that it has a condition of 404 page. So this layout will now be used on all 404 error pages. OK, so now let's go back to our original boring 404 page and refresh it to see the new custom 404 layout. Alright, that's quite a change. We can see the page title bar is letting users know that they've reached a page that doesn't exist and is providing a simple link back to the home page. And under that in the content layout section, we have some alternative content and our call to action at the bottom. Following this, we can see our global footer. As we didn't add a custom footer section to the 404 layout, the page pulls the footer from the global layout. OK, that's it. That's how you can build a custom 404 layout using Avada layouts and the full power of the Avada builder. This concludes our video on how to build a custom 404 layout. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.